Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, <coughs> Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, <coughs> Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Good morning, Hare Krishna, glories to Srila Prabhupada. I want to welcome everyone to our uh, weekly Srimad Bhagavatam reading and discussion with Yashoda Nandana Prabhu in California. And it was interesting to note that last night, my son who was visiting me sent me a text after he left, uh, letting me know that the war in Israel between uh, Iran, Israel, Hamas, etc., was escalating. Hmm. And of course, this is a very dangerous situation that the material world is in. Now, I had received uh, from my friend Paul Petock uh, a text last week about meat eating and the highest countries in the world that kill and process meat for food. And uh, it was interesting to note that America was the number one country. America. That they kill more animals than any other country in the world. And of course, animal slaughter in the Islam group is not restricted. In fact, you see that the way they treat the poor innocent creatures is absolutely horrible. So this produces karma. Very, very significant reaction will take place and I was on a walk with Srila Prabhupada Krishna Kata in Mayapur. Now, Yashoda will know the date. I seem to can't remember the dates. It was, it was either 73 or 74, Prabhu, when Prabhupada made the announcement that there would be a nuclear war. I think he said in approximately 50 years, Within 50 years, there would be a nuclear war. So that was a, quite a, a revelation to all of his disciples. Oh, and he was warning us to prepare for war. It's true that there's never been an army that doesn't use its weapons to kill others. And, you know, with the advent of nuclear bombs, this has become a threat to humanity because these weapons are so devastating. This is, uh, of course, dates back to the time of the use of the Brahmastra because there were nuclear weapons back then. Uh, but they were more directed. They weren't uh, so uh, random. In other words, when they dropped the bombs in Japan to end the Second World War, they just blew as many people up as possible. And these were innocent citizens. And they did it because they figured, well, if you see how strong we are, then 
you'll stop fighting. And they did. Nowadays, the countries all have budgets that they're required to meet here in Canada. They have some kind of 2% ceiling that of the uh, GNP, gross nat national product, they have to s spend 2% of it on militarization. What? And here in this country, there are tent cities evolving because people are homeless. There's all kinds of struggle and strife going on. That's the same as well in America. Tent cities. You look at pictures of Los Angeles, you can't figure out where you are. You have to ask the question, well, what country is this? Because this is the Kali Yuga, the Iron Age of quarrel and hypocrisy. It's not just a fabrication of our philosophy, it's a reality. And therefore, we have to recognize there, padam padam vi padam natesham. There is danger, everyone, at every step. It's, this is not philosophy, this is reality. Of course, the philosophy becomes a reality when you become a sincere devotee. You get realization. Just recently, my daughter lives in Sydney, Australia. My uh, son-in-law is the chief engineer on the building of the Sydney subway line. He was doing the one in Toronto. He got transferred there. Now, what happened? Somehow, yesterday, somebody went through a mall and killed six people. Huh? Like you go out for a walk and all of a sudden someone comes and stabs you or shoots you. But this is padam padam vipadam natesham. There is danger at every step. And no one should think, oh, I'll just live on forever. This is a mistake. Life is precarious at best. It could come in the form of a violent act. It could come in the form of a nuclear bomb. It could come in the form of a car accident. It could come in the form of a disease. We're reading in the social media, so many devotees are dying. They're dropping off day by day. And yet everyone is thinking, oh, I won't die. Not me. They will, not me. This is Maya at the highest level. It's important to understand, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu knows this, there is an urgency in what we do. It, this is not a frivolous, whimsical act that we're doing, promoting Prabhupada as the bona fide Acharya and the conduit to the absolute truth. This is not frivolous. People that treat this in that way don't understand this philosophy. They don't. And they're confused. Yes, they are. Prabhupada talks about that over and over and over again when he refers to his relationship with the Gaudi Amat. Now, if you don't study the books, if you don't study the le letters, if you do not study the conversations, like most people in ISKCON don't, you won't understand what's going on and the urgency of this mission that we have here at the Prabhupada Disciples Association, Hare Krishna Society. It's a very significant thing. And we're blessed. We are blessed to be together, even though we're only a few, out of billions of people, how many people even bother to come to the class? We do have our membership expanding. We have over 16,300 members in PDA. Still not many compared to other people, you know, like Taylor Swift. She has billions. 
But of course, there is a distinction between people searching for sense gratification and people that search for self-realization and are sincere about the process. There is a big difference. We won't go over the verses right now, but you, all of you are aware of them in the Bhagavad Gita, that out of many thousands of men, one may endeavor for perfection. And of those who achieve perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So for all of us as a group, we should rejoice in the fact that at least we have this. And I know many of you do appreciate this. And we thank you very much. And we feel blessed that we are able to perform this duty to please. We're not doing it for our personal budgets. You know, this is a voluntary group. We've been doing this, these classes for over two years without missing. You know, generally when I w went out to do performances, I would charge 500 to to $1,000 a performance. Yes, it wasn't free. But this we are happy to do because if we can get the pleasure of our spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, we are the greatest uh, recipients of the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And there's nothing, Krishna Kata, that can replace that. Nothing in this universe that can replace that. And when we read the pastimes of Srila Prabhupada in the early days, days we see he was in a great uh, struggle to keep going. And so this is also something that we should all realize that nothing is easy in this world. Nothing. It is a struggle, and this is what builds your character. If, you're, if you don't have a strong character, you will not be able to have the capacity to understand this philosophy. Weakness does not work. And that's exactly what happened on the battlefield of, of Kurukshetra. Krishna told Arjuna, give up this petty weakness of heart. Give it up. Stand up and fight on behalf of religious principles. And in this way, you'll go back home, back to Godhead. And that was what Prabhupada did. And we're going to go to the diaries of Sunday, June 12th, 1966, back in time again. Very interesting, too. Very interesting. At sunrise, Prabhupada wrote 4.30 a.m. and sunset was 7.29 p.m. And moonrise was 1.04. Navami, today the eating of the members took place and I cooked 12 different items. Wow. And all present, more than 16 ladies and gentlemen ate with great pleasure. <laughs> Lucky people. The introduction was all right. It was all grace of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. J.N. Wunk Kawala, letter by email, posted expenditure 50 cents, income uh, 80 cents, contribution was $3, and 3.80 was the reconciliation. And on Monday, the 13th of June, 1966, so we're almost at pace, and we're in May here, 2024, the moon, sunset was 4.30 a.m., sunset was 7.29 p.m., moonrise 1.27. Dasami, today in the morning class, there was some discussion on friendship and discipleship with Mr. Paul. Mm. Paul Murray, I could not go out because Paul was not in. He was afraid of being robbed. Two letters received, one from Chandra Shekhar, Shekhar and the other from the Indian Embassy, Washington, D.C., good. In the evening, there was a meeting. The attendance was nine only, up and down, but the collection was the poorest of the, at the same time, the highest, because nobody paid in the basket. A $100 total contribution. 
because somebody paid in the basket a hundred dollars. So one person stood up. So the total contribution was $103, but from all the people, he got $3. There was a book collection of $2. So the total was $105 and there was no expenditure today. At night, Carl remained with us. On Tuesday, the 14th of June, sunrise was 4.30 a.m. Sunset, 7.30 p.m., moonrise, 1.49. A codicy in the morning class, Carl Nelson and Paul attended the class, three people. Bank collection was seven. Paul paid for expenditure a dollar. No letter received and bank deposit was 120 at night, about three o'clock. Paul left the place intimating Carl that he would be away for two days. Carl deposited a deposit at telephone office. It is expected that next week by Tuesday, there will be telephone connection in my name, $40 paid by Paul for such deposit. So he's just getting phone connection. Back then, it took so long just to get a phone phone number. Wednesday, 15th of June, sunrise, 4.30, sunset, 7.30, moonrise, 2.3. Duodice, Carl paid $1 for expenditure. Paul was absent the whole day and night. In the evening, there was a meeting. There were about 12 heads, but the contribution was five fifty dollars only. The other day, a $100 contribution is understood to be made by Carl. It is to be paid to Mr. Goldsmith for registration expenditure. So Prabhupada is designating money to push forward the mission. Thursday, June 16th, sunrise 430, sunset 731, moonrise 242, triodicy. Today, Carl was paid, Carl was paid 75 cents for expense expenses and hundred dollars withdrawn from the bank for incorporation charges to be paid to mr goldsmith typewriter purchase of typewriter ribbon 85 cents and fountain pen cartridges 45 cents a dollar 30 total expenditures were 205 so friday june 17th sunrise 4 31 a.m Sunset, 7.31 p.m., moonrise, 4, 4 a.m., Chatter Dasi. Paul was paid today a dollar for expenditure in the evening. Mr. Smith, press representative, a friend of Carl, came to see me. He took note of my activities. He took one set of books. His girlfriend gave me the following address. Prof Professor De Kurt uh, Liedecker, College Station, Frid. Fredericksburg, Virginia, professor of philosophy at Mary Washington College of Virginia, specializing in oriental philosophy. Awesome. Mr. Goldsmith changed, hang the notice on the door to be so remained for 15 days in terms of the law. It is expected that the incorporation will take place sometime after the 6th of July, 1966. In the evening, there was a meeting. The collection was only $7. A book collection was $16 at $23 total income and $1 expenditure. And uh, we'll read the last section today, which is Saturday, June 18th. It's interesting to note this comment that Prabhupada makes in this particular section of his diary. Sunrise, 4.31 a.m., sunset, 7.32 p.m., moonset, moonrise and sets, Pratipad. Today, Paul was paid $1 for expenditure. The Sanskrit class was poorly attended by two only. Contribution was $2. The book collection was $2. So the total income was $4. Expenditure was $1. One letter received from Brindavan and one letter received from Tirtha Maharaj. Brindavan's letter replied and posted by Don. Further information on Don, see Srila Prabhupada's planting the seed. I'm not sure if it's accurate, just so you know. So I'm not, I don't know if we should, you should bother. It was never edited, despite all the different differences. And here, Paul Murray prepared his daily routine work let me see how 
he does to follow it. He is a problem for me. Let Krishna help him to become good behaved. So, I think, do we have Sunday, June 19th? At the bottom there? No, I guess I left it out. So, at any rate, this is the point. Yes, we do. Sunrise, 4.31 a.m. Sunset, 7.32 p.m. Moonset, 4, 9.48 a.m. Dwicha Paul has paid a dollar for expenditure. No insert, really, and it's kind of an indication that Prabhupada, let's say, based on these entries, he's concerned about his safety in on the Bowery at 94 Bowery and with this character, Paul Murray, very concerned. And this is leading him to move out of this location and for the devotees to find a new place for him where the mission could finally take off under his personal guidance and supervision without any interference. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and the Sacreton movement that he initiated back in September 19th, 1965. Let's move forward with the chanting of Jayarada Madhava and then our reading and discussion from California. There's no earthquakes going on there, is there, Prabhu? You never know with the Kali Yuga. Huh? So, uh, there, was a bit, there was a little uh, bit of an earthquake yesterday, but not in the mountains where we live, more in the, the western range of the mountain. There's earthquakes all the time in California. You can go to usgs.com. You can see them exactly as they happen, but not here. The western part of the Sierra Nevada is earthquake-free. Over here is forest fires. And yesterday it snowed, so interesting. Hellish conditions in the material <laughs> world. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Jaya Radha. The 
ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜಜನರಂಜನ ಜಮೋನ ತೀರ ಬನ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಓ ಮೈ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಸುದೇವ ದಿ ಆಲ್ ಪ್ರಿವೇಡಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಐ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಒಬಿಯನ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ಯು ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಒನ್ 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 ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂಚೇ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೀರಯತ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಂಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಒಬಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಟು ದ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡೆಡ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಟು to the nara narayana rishi who is the supermost human being three to the mother saraswati the goddess of learning then four to shrila vyasadev the author 
from Srimad Bhagavatam 124. We will read, the, welcome everyone to this reading and discussion on Srimad Bhagavatam, as we do every week. We will read a few selected verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam itself, which explains the benefit of hearing this great transcendental literatures. We'll be reading a few verses starting from Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text Number 17. Srinvatam Svakata Krishnaha Punyasravana Kirtanaha Hridyanta Stohya Badrani Vidhunoti Surit Satam Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is also the Paramatma in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, thus cleanse the desire for material enjoyment in the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge for hearing his, Krishna's messages, which are themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted from Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 17. Nashta prayeshava badreshu nityam bhagavata sevayam Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance in the Bhagavatam class or rendering service unto the pure devotees, all that is inauspicious in the heart of a candidate becomes destroyed almost to nil in thus loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs, comes into being an irrevocable fact. Text 19. Tadara jastamo baba kamalo bhada yaschaye chitayete ranaviddam stitam satve prasidati as soon as irrevocable loving service is fixed up in one's heart, at that time the effects of the nature's mode of passion and ignorance, such as lust, desire and anchorings, etc., do disappear from one's heart, and he becomes fixed up in a mode of goodness which makes him completely happy. Text number 20. Evam prasanna manasu bhagavad bhakti yogataha bhagavad tattva vinyanam mukta sangasya jayate. Thus, when one is positively fixed up in a mode of unalloyed goodness, the enlivened minded man affected by contact of devotional service of the Lord can positively know scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead in the stage of liberation from all material association. Before we go further with this program, I just wanted to make a very brief announcement. There is one devotee who came on to this program, namely Mahatma Das. I believe he might still be on here. Yes, he is. And I just want to mention, he bought two acres of land in Norton, Florida, and he is doing wonderful Varnashram development. He is associating with one devotee named Manu Bhavananda, who writes wonderful poetry about Srila Prabhupada. And they're both doing very wonderful work, developing a beautiful project and growing trees and planting crops, and it's a small development, but it's very, very exemplary and very wonderful. Very exemplary work from Mahatma Prabhu. Today we will be reading two verses from the Gaudiya Kanta R that we read every week. This is a booklet that was compiled at the direction of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, they're all verses in chapter number two glorifying the Srimad Bhagavatam called Bhagavata Tattva. Chapter number two, text number 23. This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila, 
chapter 1, text 100, Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila, chapter 1, text 100. Dui Bhagavata Dvardiya Bhaktiras, Tahara Ridaye Tore Premahayavas. Through the actions of these two Bhagavatas, the Lord instilled the mellows of Bhakti Rasa into the heart of a living being. And thus the Lord, in the heart of his devotee, comes under the control of his devotee's love. Text number 224 from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 20, text 122. Madhilila 21-22. Maya mugda jivir no hisvata krishna gyan. Jivir kripa ikaila krishna veda puran. The conditioned soul cannot revive its Krishna consciousness by his own effort. But out of causeless mercy, Krishna in the form of Veda Vyasa, compiled the Vedic literature and its supplements, the Puranas. Very, very valuable information about the meaning and power of Srimad Bhagavatam. We will proceed with the reading of the verses today. It should be noted we are reading from the original 1962 New Delhi edition of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Today we're on Canto 1, Chapter 5, Text number five and six. All translations, English synonyms, and purports by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder and charya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, also known as the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Sri Vyasa Uvacha Astyevame Sarvamidam Tvayoktam Tatapi natma paritushyatime tatmulam abhyaktam maba agada bhodam pritchamahetvam atma bhava atma bhutam shri vyasadeva of the name uvacha said asti there is eva certainly me, mine, saravam, all, idam, this, twaya, by you, uktam, uttered, tatapi, and yet, na, not, atma, self, paritushyati, does pacify, me, unto me, Tat of which Mulam root Agadabhodam the man of unlimited knowledge Prichamahe do inquire Tvam unto you Atmabhava self born Atmabhutam offspring Translation by Srila Prabhupada Vyasadeva replied that all that he, Narada, had said about him, Vyasa, were perfectly correct. In spite of all these, his self was not pacified. He therefore asked Narada, who was the man of unlimited knowledge, on account of his being the offspring of one Brahmin, who is self-born without any mundane father and mother on the root of the cause. Purport. In the material world, everyone is engrossed with the scanty idea of identifying the body or the mind as self. As such, all knowledge disseminated in the material world is related either with the body or with the mind, and that is the root cause of all despondencies. This root cause of despondency all over the material world is not always detected by anyone, even though he may be the greatest erudite scholar 
in materialistic knowledge. It is good, therefore, to approach a personality like Narada for solution of the root cause of all despondencies. Why Narada shall be approached in this connection is explained below. Text number six. Save bhavan veda samasta guhyam upasita yat purusham puranam paravaresho manasiva vishvam srijyatya batyati gune rasangaha sa das vai certainly bhavan yourself Veda, no. Samasta, all-inclusive. Gosham, confidential. Upasito, devotee of. Yat, because. Purusham, the personality of Godhead. Puranam, the oldest. Paravareshu, the controller of material and spiritual world. Manasa, mind. Eva, only. Vishwam, the universe. Srijati, creates. Avatyati, annihilates. Gune, by the qualitative matter. Asangaha, unattached. Translation. My Lord, everything that is mysterious is also known to you because the creator and destroyer of the material world and maintainer of the spiritual world, the original personality of Godhead, who is transcendental to the three modes of material nature, is worshipped by you. Purport. A person who is 100% engaged in the service of the Lord is the emblem of all knowledge. Such devotee of the Lord in full perfection of devotional service is also perfect by the qualification of the personality of Godhead. As such, the eightfold perfection of mystic power, Astashiddhi, a very little portion of godly opulence. A devotee like Narada can act wonderful by his spiritual perfection for which every individual is trying to overcome success. Srila Narada is 100% perfect living being, although not equal to the qualifications of the personality of Godhead. O Magyana Timirandasya, Nyanan Jana Shalakaya, <coughs> Chakshuran Militam Yena, Tasme Shigurave Namaha, Namaum Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prestaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine, Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine Bhakti Siddhanta Shishyaya Bhakti Vedanta Namine Prasannaya Prashantaya Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Bhagavad Bandanam Kadyam Guru Bandana Purvakam Kshiram Sharkara Yuktam Kadati Hibisheshataha Adadana Strinam Danter Idam Yache Punaha Punaha Srimadru Papadam Bhoja Dulisham Majan Majan Mani Amsho Bhagavato Smyaham Sadadaso Asmi Saravata Tatkripa Pikshagonityam Tatprishta Shatkaromisvam 
ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಚೇತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತಗಧಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ there are some very important points that are being raised because the despondency of vyasadev was not due to not being qualified he was very qualified to compile the various vedic literature he had assembled the four vedas divided the four vedas the puranas the mahabharata and so the vedanta sutra very very important point vedanta sutra is described as the most complete explanation of philosophy in the world the most exalted philosophical explanation of philosophy of the absolute truth veda vyasa had already compiled that but still he was not satisfied still he was not fulfilled and narada muni the transcendental traveler comes to see him he comes and it's very important to see how prapad is describing this narada muni in text number 6 on the purport in the middle prapad says a devotee like narada can act wonderful by his spiritual perfection for which every individual is trying to overcome success shrila narada is 100% perfect living being although not equal to the qualifications of the personality of god it now this is very important no living being can equal krishna in the mahabharata in the vishnu sahasranam 1000 names of vishnu one of the name is called asama urdhva asama urdhva when these two words are combined that means that no one asama urdhva can be higher can be equal to the absolute truth lord vishnu lord krishna this is the same principle that krishna describes to arjuna in the bhagavad gita in chapter 7 mataparataram nanyat kinchidasti dananjaya there is no truth superior to me arjuna so the question comes up why did lord krishna speak the bhagavad gita to arjuna why did lord krishna choose vyasadev to deliver the message of shrimad bhagavatam in the case of the bhagavad gita we see as we go on with our systematic study of all the verses that krishna is explaining to, to arjuna anasuyave because you are not envious of me that is a very important point there was one conversation which the prabhupad where devoti is asking so prabhupad how can we get rid of envy and prabhupad's reply was do not become envious of your spiritual master now this is a very important point because the spiritual master gives the mercy gives the knowledge the mercy of the supreme personality of god at krishna therefore we respect the spiritual the bona fide authorized spiritual master like shri prabhupad sakshadari tvena samasta shastra the although he is not god he is worshiped just like god because he gives the unalloyed message the pure message of krishna so krishna is giving to arjuna this transcendental pure message because he was not envious 
And we see in the situation with Vyasadeva, Vyasadeva was highly qualified. He was a liberated soul. He had done all the vows, all the austerities, tended all the Vedic fires, studied the Vedas, divided the Vedas. Yet, in spite of all of this, he is not happy. But yet we see here that Vyasadeva is describing Narada Muni, my Lord, everything that is mysterious is also known to you because the creator and destroyer of the material world and maintainer of the spiritual world, the original personality of Godhead who is transcendental to the three modes of material nature is worshipped by you. Now, this is very important. When we speak of the bona fide Acharya, what is the difference between the bona fide Mahabhagavata Acharya and the neophyte? Where there is a Madhyam neophyte, a Kanishta neophyte. What is the difference? There is one major difference. The topmost Mahabhagavata has personally realized Krishna. He has personally seen Krishna. He has fully understood all the transcendental activities of Krishna. Some of you may be familiar with the conversation in 1976 in New York where a reporter is asking Srila Prabhupada, how do you know whom to choose for positions in your society? So one of the devotees, one of the leaders, and saying, well, when my intelligence tells me and all of these prophets says, no, Krishna will tell him directly. So that is the understanding. What we are hearing from Prabhupada is not the product of some just mere scholarship or speculation. No, it is dictated directly by the Supreme Personality of God and by God himself to his pure devotees, Srila Prabhupada. Just this week, I sent out an email describing a few points about the Bhagavad Gita lecture. And there were several pictures there. One of these pictures was a picture of Prabhupada translating his books, and behind him was Bhakti's Divine Grace, Bhakti Siddhanta, Saraswati Thakur, Gorkishore, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the whole disciplic succession, all the way to Lord Krishna. Because Srila Prabhupada is presenting the exact message of the whole disciplic succession. But Prabhupada was especially empowered because he had the unlimited intelligence to fulfill the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For those of you who have studied the Antadila of Chaitanya Charitamrita, in chapter 5, you can see Prabhupada is describing how when the spiritual master speaks, it's to be understood that the supreme personality of God in Krishna is speaking through him. In other words, when the spiritual master is speaking, we have to understand this is Krishna delivering the message through his pure devotee, his pure unalloyed devotee. Now, this is a very important point because in this movement, there are many persons who have very deep, dangerous misunderstandings about what is a pure devotee. We've seen this, especially in the first few years, in the first 10 years after Prabhupada departed. And it's still being exhibited today because they do not read the books, the original books, the non-adulterated books. Therefore, they have a defective understanding what is a pure devotee, what is an authorized devotee, this is a very important point. Because if one does not understand this point, it is guaranteed that he will have so many other misunderstandings. But some people will say, oh, I've read it. Yeah, Prabhupada is a pure devotee. Well, what does that mean? 
What does that mean? Would you say pure devotee? When it says a pure devotee is beyond the defects of a conditioned soul, what does that mean? Do they understand this? Do they really accept that Srila Prabhupada was not a fallible, defective human being? Do they really accept that Srila Prabhupada was always constantly in touch with Krishna? Do they really accept the conclusions that are described in Srila Prabhupada's books? If they do, how did they behave the way they did? If one understands the position of the Mahabhagavata, I'm speaking of the topmost Mahabhagavata as described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 24, text 330, Mahabhagavata Sreshto Brahmano Ve Guru Nrinam Sarvesham Ivalokanam Maso Pujo Yataharihi. Why do we worship the Guru as good as God? Why? There's got to be a reason behind this. It is not just sentiment and emotion. Of course, even if one does this just out of cement and emo sentiment or emotion, it is still beneficial. It's definitely beneficial. But if one understands the real philosophy behind it, then that is called mature intelligence. So that verse from Chaitanya Chakra explains when one has attained to a position of topmost Bhagavata, the Sanskrit word is Mahabhagavata Sreshto. Sreshto means topmost. Then one should be accepted as good as Lord Hari. And only such a person is fit to worship as good as Krishna. Of course, one may argue, well, it says in the Shastra, one should worship the Vaishnavas, one should offer all obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. Well, that's nice. That is true. But there are distinctions. Shri Prabhupada wrote a letter one time about one of his godbrothers with whom he had differences with. Prabhupada says, yes, all of these people are Vaishnavas, but there are different degrees of authorities. There are different degrees. One has to use his intelligence. Just like if you go to a police department, they have some training academies, some cadets. They're just getting trained. And then when they graduate, they train these people. So they're there for one or two years. They're there in the, in the police vehicle. They're being shown by a more experienced vehicle. Some of these police people, they become trained. They take additional training. They become detectives to be able to investigate crimes, to investigate criminals. But there's different degrees along the line. It is not simply that somebody says, I'm a cadet and I want to go investigate a complicated murder. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to be trained. And by proper training and experience, gradually one gets that position. Of course, this may be a material example, but basically one has to purify himself and hear from the Acharya. We've seen this in 1980, when the GBC of the society was trying to explain how certain members had exhibited problems and fall downs. They came up with a paper basically that was called the Mahajans at Difficulty Papers where they were trying to find fault with the Mahajans like Lord Shiva, Arjuna, Dhruva Maharaj. They were claiming that Arjuna got bewildered on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Oh, really? Is that similar to somebody having Madhurya Lila in the bushes? Is that what you think? Lord Shiva ran after Mohini. Oh, really? And you think that this is the same as the kind of behavior that you've had? Are you on the level of Lord Shiva? But the point is, they never went through the books. They never studied and had discussions in the books. This, mad, this is called the fever of pratishta, the desire for name, fame, 
power, position, control. It's madness. And it's summarized in three basic points. Profit, adoration, and distinction. Pod, P-A-D. That is why all of these offenses and all these major operats and mistakes are committed. Ignorance, not hearing properly. One should never think, oh, I'm such a big devotee, I'm such an experienced devotee, everybody should answer my phone calls and my emails. No, it doesn't work that way. Prabhupada one time when they asked him, what about the big devotees in this movement? And Prabhupada's reply was, I'm the only big devotee in this movement <laughs> to whom it may concern. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Brilliant. Absolutely inspiring to hear this truth being spoken. And I wanted to highlight a point that you made, Prabhu, which was how Prabhupada is the transparent via media. This is a very important point of philosophy that is ignored by many people, unfortunately. I wanted to relate back to 1971 when I was in Detroit, Michigan. It was July. And a group of us had joined the movement here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Somehow or other, a small temple was opened here uh, by some devotees from Buffalo, fellow Dharmaraj and his wife, Guna Mai. So they came as a young couple and they started a center here in Hamilton. And somehow or other, the people in our band and other people that were associating with us became very interested in Prabhupada's Gita. We got a copy of the Gita from the McMaster Library, one of those blue ones. And uh, one of uh, my friends at the time, uh, Ron Marinelli, Uddhama Shloka, he started to read them. He was reading different yoga books and, you know, there was a calling, it appears, from Krishna to all of us to take up Krishna consciousness. We had no books, we had no facility, but somehow or other, by transcendental mercy, we took up the mission. And in July of that year, we went down to Detroit, Michigan, to meet Prabhupada for the first time. And uh, <clears throat> When I was at the airport, it was quite a jubilant environment. I know you showed that you were aware of this. Back then, in those days, people were seemed so very sincere and appreciative of who Prabhupada was, how unique he was amongst all living beings. Such a great soul is very rare. And uh, when Prabhupada got off the plane and came into the airport, there, I think there was about 150 to 200 devotees there. It was extraordinary. And the kirtan was without any inhibition. In other words, people weren't worried that other people in the airport were looking at us. Oh, look at those robes. We had these pink polyester clothes on. We didn't even have uh, cotton clothes. We had pink polyester dhotis and simple clothes. It was, you know, we we're just a sincere group of people interested in seeing a pure devotee of Krishna. And that was one thing that had been instilled in us by the devotees that were teaching us how to become Krishna conscious. Siksha, representing Prabhupada and teaching others. Siksha, not Diksha, Siksha. And 
we got this idea or understanding that Prabhupada was the transparent via media for Krishna. Hmm. That means that he had completely surrendered his body, his mind, and intelligence to the service of his spiritual master and Krishna. And this way, it wasn't him speaking. It was Krishna speaking through him. This is a very significant point. And I can remember looking finally at Srila Prabhupada. When I was in the crowd, we were all sitting around. And for whatever reason, I thought in my mind, I still remember this very vividly. Not very many things, but this. I thought, I can't even look at Prabhupada. I'm not qualified. I don't have the right to even see this person. And I'm sitting there with my head down behind other devotees. And then it came to me, this is ridiculous. You're, you're, you're completely off, Vishva. Bobby Hebert at the time, I thought, what do you mean you can't look? And so I took my head and lifted it up and I looked for the first time I saw Prabhupada sitting in his asana in the airport. And you'll remember Yashoda, how Prabhupada used to drink water. I'd never seen anything like this in my life. He had a loda. And he took the loda and he lifted it above his mouth and he poured the water down into his throat. And I was like in shock. I thought, look at that. It was like silver sliding down his throat. Can you imagine? And I looked at him very carefully. And what did I see? I saw a completely surrendered soul who was a transparent via media of Krishna speaking to all of us. That was my first realization when I saw the form of the spiritual master. And I'm sure it wasn't just me that got that realization, but everyone saw that. And this is the understanding that all of us should have, that the spiritual master, the pure devotee of Lord Chaitanya, the Acharya is not an ordinary human being. And this minimization of Prabhupada that he is gone and left us is a big philosophical error that has infected his movement. That Prabhupada lives on in sound. This is a yoga process. Shravanam Kirtanam. It is not a asana pranayama process of sitting and breathing or pretending, just like you were mentioning. And I posted something on the Prabhupada Disciples Association today. Uh, some quotes from a lady that wrote a book about the betrayal of the spirit. She was talking about some people that were posing as gurus in our mission and were watching pornography. So that one moment, they're out in the front of the temple room, sitting on the Vyasa sign, and in the next moment, they're back at their room watching videos on their computers. Actually, it was a person that I knew, Gunagrahi. He was in Buffalo, before Kirtananda dismantled Buffalo, by the way, before he destroyed it and took the devotees to West Virginia. And one of them was... Uh, the person who murdered Sri Lochan, Tirtha. Interesting enough, eh? Small world. So at any rate, uh, how is it that people like this can pretend to be Diksha gurus in the line of disciplic succession from Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta, 
and Lord Chaitanya. And at the same time, in the back room, perform all kinds of nefarious activities. Why? Hypocrisy. Heresy. This is going on. And this is, as you said, Yashoda Nandana, perfectly. This is because these devotees do not study the books. It's apparent that they don't study the books. One, they do not listen to Prabhupada's lectures. Or if they do, they listen with a filter. You know what a filter is? A filter is a, a device that people use to sort and classify what they want to hear and what they don't want to hear. This is, <laughs> this is simple psychology. It's called narcissism, actually. You only hear what you want to hear to promote your own personal agenda, or as Yashoda said, pratishta. You have your own purpose, and you'll do everything possible to promote it and disregard the orders of your spiritual master. And in this way, you and your followers are doomed. Don't kid yourself. This is not frivolous. It's a very serious issue, and I'm sad to see how few people really are interested in truth. You know, we have a big job, everyone, to move forward and try to somehow or other propagate the truth in spite of all the hardships, in spite of all the propaganda that's being projected to the human society by these people that are only interested in pretending. It's called the Pada disease, posturing, posing, and pretending, oh, three Ps, excuse me. That's their business, posturing, posing, and pretending. Just like I was speaking to Krishna Kata yesterday, we have this person in San Diego, and he mentioned to me, oh, I was didn't want to really mention about Dravida, who's the uh, translator of the new editions of Prabhupada's books and how this person writes poetry constantly and reads these stupid poems every time he gets a chance to speak in the San Diego temple, how he's completely enamored by his own so-called intelligence and the directions he's getting from his boss Jaya Dweta, who's changed everything, and their arrogance is revolting to people that are intelligent, that understand this philosophy, that want to serve Prabhupada, that want to go back to Godhead with the proper link. They're being misled on a very high level of uh, offense. It's called, in our philosophy, Hatimata. Mad elephant offense. And this is the fact of the matter. And this is something that we will fight to the end of the day, all of us together, to make sure it's destroyed by the grace of Prabhupada Krishna and Lord Chaitanya. Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, please. You're raising some very important points. I want to read from a lecture from Srila Prabhupada. Yes. Uh, this was in December 13th, 1970. It's a class on Srimad Bhagavatam 6122 in Indore, India on December 13th, 1970. And it's quite significant how Prabhupada explains the whole process of bhakti. Prabhupada said, so we can join you if you flatter me. Prabhupada is explaining about somebody who came. Whatever I know, if you accept, that's all, but then I can. And if you say something against my conviction, oh, then I'm not going to join. But here the process is first is you first surrender. 
Whatever you know, nonsense, you give it up. First of all, become blank slate. So I was told by some authority, a very responsible man, that in Germany, there are musical institutions. So when a student who goes there who knows something about musical art is charged more. Is it a fact? He is charged more? He is charged more because extra endeavor has to be done to make him forget what nonsense he has learned. Because this learning is all nonsense, so one has to take. So Prabhupada basically is explaining that in order to make progress, to make advancement in spiritual life, one has to give up all false materialistic ideas that one has learned in the past and surrender to the Acharya. Hare Krishna. Krishna Gita in California. Maybe you could further comment on today's class and your realizations that you're getting. Uh, well, again, it's an excellent class, Yashoda. Thank you so much. And the lead-in by Vishvakarma. Uh, it's hard to expand or elaborate on something so spot on and perfect. I just love listening to everything uh, that, that you say because it reminds me of, of when I joined. I was uh, under the uh, guidance and training of Gore Sindar, uh, who passed away in, in Alachua about a year ago uh, on mm -hmm. a Ecodacy uh, night and surrounded by uh, disciples of Prabhupada and, and mostly his god brothers from Hawaii. And when I say that the PDA classes remind me of those days is because Gore Sindar had split away because he saw what was happening and he he could not tolerate being around his god brothers that were chasing you know pada prophet adoration and distinction destroying Prabhupada's legacy so he just gathered himself on a farm much like Mario Pineda is doing much like your friend in Mexico is doing and so many other devotees are just starting something new and maintaining Prabhupada's pure teachings, like Gorsundar did for years. And I caught up a little bit of that when I got to Los Angeles because Gorsundar had lost his lease on his piece of land. So then I was seeing the same uh, proper understanding of Prabhupada's position of Uttama Adhikari, Maha Bhagavat, via media uh, transfer of Krishna to us through him, his body, his mind, his intelligence. And then it went away. You know, you, you might say it seemed to be like gradually it went away because there were so many devotees in Los Angeles still hanging on to what they knew to be the truth, you know, and reading Prabhupada's books daily. And following the four regular principles and chanting 16 rounds and engaging in devotional service. And so much of that is lost. And so all you have, which is exactly what Ronald Singh wrote in the message board, is a scam. It's a, I'm dressed like a, a Vaishnav and I wear this and I wear this and everyone thinks I'm this, but I'm just chasing profit. I'm, I'm, I'm a bean counter. I have become a money counter. So that's what I see is happening. And uh, the shelter that both of you are providing for devotees that are logged in right now and then can see it later on YouTube is humbly, in my opinion, the only shelter I see out there because it reminds me of how it was when I joined in 78. I was introduced to Srila Prabhupada by one of his staunch disciples. Gorsinder was a staunch, or is, eternally speaking, he is a staunch disciple. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the point is you don't need the Maha Bhagavat's Vapu. It is a movement of Vani. It is a movement of Shiksha. And he is the eternal Diksha guru. 
No one is on his platform. This is my realization of today's discussion is there isn't anyone. And Prabhupada knew this. So he said, all right, we're going to make this official representative system. And yes, there's nothing wrong with the word Ritvik. It has only been made wrong by these yes. opposers because it directly, how do you say, it directly opposes their hidden, not so hidden agenda. Now we know what they're seeking. They're just seeking what every other uh, materialistic person seeks, which is a cushy position, and they don't want it to be interrupted. And reading Prabhupada's books, ah, I don't need to do that anymore. I already read them once, or I already listened to a bunch of lectures, and I don't need to do it anymore. And they have lost their connection with the truth, and they're just chasing their own sense gratification and their own profit and their adoration, their distinction, like this Jayadweta. Uh, the arrogance that is an aura of arrogance around him when you see him walk by, it's like, oh my gosh, there's zero humility there. It's just a aura of arrogance because I'm so scholarly and I've made Prabhupada's books what they should have been originally and, and they're better now. So this is the disease of placing yourself in the Maha Bhagavat's position that I know better than the guru. I know better than my teacher. I've surpassed my teacher. This is the disease. So that's my realization. Thank you for letting me speak. Hare Krishna. Perfect. And you know, I wanted to further, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu refer to what you said when Prabhupada said, told us, do not become envious of your spiritual master, which is fundamentally the most important thing because relationship with the spiritual master is the key to your advancement in spiritual life. There's a personal relationship that exists between the devotee or disciple and the guru, personal, just like super soul. The relationship between yourself and Krishna as super soul within your heart. So when you chant your rounds every day, you're chanting to please the spiritual master and Krishna. They're aware if you get up and go and chant your 16 rounds minimum. They're aware. And it makes a difference in how you're able to conduct yourself because of your connection to Krishna, to the super soul, and to Prabhupada. It makes a difference. How can someone know? Well, they have to do it. Actions speak louder than words. There is no such thing as pretend. And you have to listen. You have to listen to the words. You have to try to control the mind, which is very difficult. But if you practice and practice and practice and practice, then eventually things will become better. And I want a Dharma Bhavana in Dallas, Texas, our good Prabhu, maybe he could share, hopefully he's by a computer, he can share his realizations and understanding today. And then I see we have a question there, Yashoda will take from... Sorry, good stuff. Chad H, whoever he is. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Yeah. Bhavana. I didn't know if I was gonna to speak today or anything, but I did have something that happened um, some years ago that relates to today, today's class quite a bit. Yeah. We were talking about the uh, Parampara and how all the members are very extraordinary Paramahamsa topmost devotees. It's a very extraordinary, uh, kind of a wonderful, uh, like in chapter four of Bhagavad Gita. And I was giving a class about 15 years ago and uh, <laughs> it was about the Parampara, about how all the members are, you know, first class, um, Mahabhagavad devotees and then I referred to the uh, Prashadam room there was uh, like a five foot by five foot uh, photo or not not a photo but a, a, a picture of all the different prom prom members going back about uh, 15 generations yeah and uh, it showed you Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta all, all the different and about and it showed a lot of the uh, members with long hair and beards and they're kind of shabbily dressed like people did you know 
facade was maybe be like you know many years ago. And I was just telling the devotees in class that if someone sees this in the 21st century from a material point of view, it may look like the different personalities are maybe not very intelligent, not very qualified, that just somehow they're Indian people that got put in the Prampara. And so I explained how the, the members of the Prampara are not should not be seen from a material point of view, however they're dressed, like Shulaviasade, for example. Whatever he looks like, we understand him to be like the topmost authority of a fully empowered personality. And after I finished the class with different quotes from Shila Balde, Bijabushan, and uh, the devotee said, wow, you, you, you presented a conundrum. They couldn't understand how that I had uh, explained the members of the Prampara to be all Mahabhagavats when they were thinking it's something like it, where you get enough votes, it's, it's kind of like um, uh, they saw things from a different point of view. <laughs> and I just... Uh, uh, I, I couldn't explain things any more clearly that, that our prampara is very special. It's not just some but by this put up there by somebody's whim, but it's actually very special personalities. <clears throat> that's all. Thank you, Haribo. <laughs> well, that's very true. And remember this, everyone. Opinion. Everyone has an opinion, but Prabhupada explains Vaishnava doesn't have an opinion. He speaks the words of his spiritual master. That's not opinion, that's fact. So sometimes people call us fault finders. Oh, you're a fault finder. No, fact finder is more appropriate. Search out the truth, discover the facts regarding a matter. It's so wonderful that Yashoda Nandana Prabhu is with us and he has this supernatural power of recollection where he draws in all these wonderful pastimes of himself personally with Prabhupada or with his god brothers back in the days when Prabhupada was with us to give us an insight. If we're not personally present, we can still get an insight into the reality of the situation based on hearing transcendental sound from bona fide disciples of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We have a Prabhu here, Jod H. He's got his hand up. You showed it. Let's I, find out. Jod, who I is Hi, can, can you hear me, dear devotees? We do, sir. Hi, So I would like to ask two questions. But yes, before please. that, I would like to say thank you so much for all the nice videos you post on YouTube. I live in France and oh. I discovered your nice YouTube channel some weeks ago. And it has been a very precious shelter for me. And I wanted to say thank you so much, Yashodanandan Prabhu, for your class, because there is no space for speculation. It's 100% Prabhupada. You quote Prabhupada, and it gives me so. It is so nice. I cannot say more than this. And Vishwakarma Prabhu, your reactions, when you preach, when you speak, it comes from your heart. You are such a sweet devotee. And both of you, you are great inspiration for me. So thank you for this. And for the questions, you were talking about the editing of books and the false gurus. So I've got two questions, very small. One of them is, if we do not have anything except the modified books, for example, the Bhagavad Gita, it is better than nothing. Should we distribute it or we shouldn't at all? And the second question I've got is, when Srila Prabhupada is speaking about false gurus in his books, saying that they are rascal number one, that they will go to some not so good place after death, does it refer also to false Hare Krishna gurus? Because they did some valuable service in the past, for sure. But now they are deviating. So I would like to know what is uh, their service and the disservice they do. What is their position? Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yes, you showed up, please. Microphone. 
Your microphone, Prabhu. Merci beaucoup de tes commentaires et tes questions, Prabhu Hare Krishna. I'm just telling Haribol. him thank you very much for your your commentary and your questions. He's obviously from France, speaking French. Uh, with regard to your first question, I just want to say from a philosophical perspective, we read every day when we chant in the samsara prayers, yasya prasada bhagavat prasado, by pleasing the spiritual master, one pleases bhagavan, bhagavat prasado. Yasya aprasada nagati kutopi. If one displeases the spiritual master, then one does not know where he's going. And what you're talking about is very, very significant. Many devotees have asked that the original books are not available in these various languages because what they've done, they've taken the non-authorized 1983 mistranslation and misrepresentation of Bhagavad Gita and retranslated that in all these languages, French, English, Russian, uh, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, German, everywhere. So a lot of these books that are being distributed are not Srila Prabhupada's original message. It is adulterated books. I've often given the example that milk comes in different ways, but real milk is cow milk. Now in India, you can get camel milk, goat milk, buffalo milk, but this is not, you cannot use buffalo ghee to do a fire sacrifice. You cannot use goat milk to do an abhishek of a deity. Why? It is not pure. So basically the situation is what we have is a very dangerous situation because the whole preaching of the movement has been polluted and compromised by these nonsense, non-authorized translations of the books. That's the first point. It, because this, this is a topic which many devotees, not just your good self, but many of the devotees are discussing all over the world. That's why we're trying to educate the devotees, trying to inform the devotees. It is my understanding by talking with Aprakrita Prabhu in Montreal, who is very fluent in French and who preaches both in France and Quebec, that during Prabhupada's manifested presence, they did have a Bhagavad Gita in French that was a translation of the 1972 Bhagavad Gita. But after 1983, they retranslated the Bhagavad Gita in French to conform to Jai Dweta's fanciful ideas and all of his changes. So one can see how dangerous what they have done. Not only have they done the damage in the English language, but every other language they've touched. But we do know that there are many devotees in Europe that are trying to retranslate the original 1972 Macmillan Gita into different languages, such as German and Polish and Russian and other languages. So, so there are efforts by many devotees to try to correct the situation. I didn't quite, I forgot your second question. Maybe you can say the second question again. Haribol Prabhu, thank you for your very nice reply. And the, my second question was, when Srila Prabhupada is speaking about rascal gurus, let's say we'll go to the lowest planets of the universe, can it refer also to false Hare Krishna gurus? Because they can propagate somehow others the Hare Krishna mantra. Maybe they have done nice service in the past, but now they are doing so much wrong things. So how... Does it refer to them in the books of Srila Prabhupada? It depends on your realization. One should be very careful and fair in not accusing any devotee of being a false devotee or misrepresenting or cheating or whatever. But when it becomes very obvious, because Prabhupada in his books doesn't say, except the devotees in this movement. Because if you look in Prabhupada's books, for example, in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the ninth, ninth canto, there is a purport when Prabhupada said, there are many karmis in the dress of devotees in the Krishna consciousness movement, and the Supreme Personality of God is expert to detect them. I'm paraphrasing. 
In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in one purport, Prabhupada said there are many non-devotees. If one thinks that there are many non-devotees or pseudo-devotees in the Krishna conscious movement, one can associate directly with the spiritual master. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, again, Prabhupada said there are many envious persons in a Dresden of devotees. One has to use his intelligence to judge, but we're not going to go here on this program and say this devotee was bad, that devotee was bad, because ultimately this is in the hands of Krishna. Krishna will take care of this, but we have to use our God-given intelligence. People that change the books, people that ban devotees, that sue devotees, oh, that beat no, no, no. devotees. Stop the noise, please. People that ban devotees, sue devotees, and harass devotees, we know that these are not very high quality people. So we'll leave it at that for now. We will discuss this. On Purpali that Sant Spiritual. I'm explaining to him in French. We can discuss this a little bit later. Yeah, I, I thought know. I thought Prabhu he also had another question. I'm gonna just share it was if you don't have any books that are authorized, is it all right to distribute these edited books? And I'll give an answer on that. Right now I have a box of Gita's that are edited and guess what they're, I'm using them for. I'm going to light a fire in the backyard and burn them. So the point is this, there is an opportunity now Prabhu for you and you can be in touch with one of our uh, fall, uh, people here in our group, uh, Vincott in South India, who's very much eager to s distribute books. And if you can be in touch with him, you can send him an email, ask him how you can get the authorized books from different sources because they are there. They're available. If you want them, you can get them. Like I have a lady coming, she's going to buy three Bhagavad Gita's from me this week and distribute the, them into the Toronto devotee community who are hankering to get original books. So the point is, yes, you have to end the disease. It's not going to help people if you consider, can continue to spread the cancer. And there's a lot of reasons why we say that, which we won't discuss right now. But at any time, you're welcome to reach us either on Facebook Messenger or on uh, WhatsApp, Prabhu, or uh, any other medium, Telegram, whatever you use to discuss these matters with us. And then we can figure out different ways to do things properly. Now we have... I know we're a bit over time, but we're going to get the last two people that have their hands up. Uh, Janus Priya in Hawaii, and then we'll go to Sham Sundar or Shama in uh, Miami. Uh, Janus Priya Prabhu, please, in Hawaii. Senior Hare God Krishna. All right. Hare... Sila Prabhupada, please said my humble obeisances. Yes, uh, very, very nice class as always. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, yeah, I was there in Mayapur on, on one morning walk when Prabhupada was talking about uh, the war. Yeah. And it was it was real interesting. Uh, Ramasar said, Sila Prabhupada, when the <laughs> bombs are coming down, are we going to be out of shooting your books? <laughs> and Prabhupada laughed. And he said, you have to be enthusiastic, but not so much. <laughs> So, and then he said that within 50 years, uh, this is going to happen. So, uh, he said this more than one time. So, we see that it's happening as Bishop Karma mentioned. The, the war is actually on. There's actual war. There's uh, Iran is uh, so sent 500 drones to, to Israel yesterday. So this is war. This is real war. So Prabhupada said at the end of that, that walk, he said, but 
this is the point is that it doesn't matter 50 years, one year, one day, one month. He says, this second, in this second, we have to be as Krishna conscious as we can, and that should be a whole life. How could I become Krishna conscious right now? So he made that point that it doesn't matter when it happens or if it happens or not, is that we have to get ready now because we don't know when we're going to have to change bodies. So it's very important to, to uh, spread this word. And I always try to encourage people on this Sangha to invite one person to this class. Yes, invite, invite one person. Every week we should work or once a month or even if you do it once a year. If we've done it this once a year, then we'll have double the, the attendance. And people are so grateful once they discover this this oasis on this Maya desert. Because we come here and, and we drink the nectar of Prabhupada's direct message that hasn't been polluted. And we receive the greatest benefit. And like Prabhu asked the question that, he said, okay, to read these books, he would not have any other books. My understanding is that one drop of poison in a, that's a matter how big a container, when you feed something to your loved ones or to your animals that you know that there's poison in it, even if it's a minute poison, no, we wouldn't do that. So this is the case. This, this, unfortunately, these demons have poison Prabhupada's books and so they're poisoning everybody that reads them and they might have some realization but it's definitely not the ultimate realization that is to awaken that love of Krishna in our heart and that was Prabhupada's main mission he came to awaken that love of God in our heart Hare Krishna thank you very much a very deep explanation of philosophy. We're going to take one last comment or question from our Prabhu in Miami, uh, Nilesh Shama. Hare Krishna. And we'll move forward from there. Yes, Hare Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. Hare uh, you know, it's a very interesting dilemma which the Prabhu uh, with the French accent was talking about is about the books. Now remember is uh, I remember the instance where I think it happened with uh, Madhudvisa Das or somebody I don't remember is that when he asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you want us to distribute books and we go to all kinds of corners in the world to distribute books. But if they don't get initiated, how will they go back home back to Godhead? And the answer which Prabhupada gave immediately was looking straight into his eyes saying, the moment they read my books, they are initiated. This is the power of the original books. This is the power of the unadulterated books. And just because there are no books, as uh, uh, very nicely said by Prabhuji from Hawaii, is that even that little poison, will it initiate the person and take him back home, back to Godhead? Because the purpose of you distributing these books is to help the person go back home, back to Godhead. Will the adulterated books do the needful? That is number one. Number two now, the solution to this problem, at least temporary solution, is uh, if you were to go to this website called asitis.com, asitis.com, it is a website where you can digitally see Prabhupada's 1972 Macmillan version of the Bhagavad Gita. And if you access it, from Google, as it is .com, Google has this provision where you can translate pages. Either the website is in English, it can translate to German, to Polish, to French, whatever it may be. So you can use this digital version. Of course, the translation is done by Google. So there may be a little change, but you are sticking to the original version. And Prabhupada and Krishna seated in your heart as Paramatma, and seated in whoever's heart who's trying to sincerely read Srila Prabhupada's original books will get the message to him. And hopefully I would, 
at this point, even uh, request um, Yashoda Nandan Prabhu to try to see if we can translate them back, the original ones, in different languages, as mentioned. But until that time, you can access it through Google and you can translate those uh, pages into whatever language you want. Uh, and the website is asitis.com. So please stick to this original one. Do not succumb to any other, any other kind of books, just like as if uh, something is better than nothing. No, that doesn't work. This is 100% pure. And the ultimate aim is for us, any jiva, to read this book is to go back home, back to God. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you. And I wanted to comment just quickly ending up. And thank you everyone for participation. Prabhupada was relating to a person that reads his books as initiated. So let's understand what that means. And Prabhupada was saying that initiation means to start something. In other words, you're starting the process of learning the philosophy. Initiate. And then when you move forward, the proper system is formal initiation. Now, someone would say, that's a formality. Again, we have to understand the difference between formal and formality. These are different meanings. And so it takes special understanding and some common sense to realize or explain to others this philosophy of how to become a Prabhupada disciple. And we won't continue that dialogue today because it is over and I had complaints yesterday. Oh, you went past the prescribed time. So, but the, we do find that the, uh, the uh, discussions are very engaging and enlivening and uh, involving very involving and, and urgent in another sense for us to take the opportunity to do to do this with all of you. And thank you very much. All glories to the Prabhupada. I just wanted to remind everyone we'll be back on Wednesday for Chaitanya Charitamrita class. That's eight o'clock uh, on uh, <clears throat> Eastern Standard Time here in Canada and also in the United States. And also, uh, please, if you have a chance, like uh, Janus Priya, invite other people. This, it's very important for us to go out and distribute this information to others. And I know that uh, Vinkat sent Krishna Gita a copy of uh, our invitation. And he's having it printed. And Joe Felice here in Hamilton is also having it printed for us. Uh, Prakrita is doing it in Montreal. So if you want a copy of the invitation to the classes, and this will open the doorway for people to get a further understanding of all the details concerning these matters in our newsletters, on our uh, website, in our PDA um, chat and message board, on Facebook, all kinds of information is being given to people in general so that the cloud of confusion that has fallen over the earth can be dissipated uh, by the mercy of the uh, Prabhupada Disciples Association membership and participants in the Hare Krishna Society. So thank you again, everyone. Glories to Srila Prabhupada and the Sankirtan movement. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Radha Shri Vasadi Gauratam Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Dadadha Shri Vashati Gaur Bhakta Bhunda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda
Let us offer our respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. Vancha kalpa tarupyascha kripa sindubya evacha patitanam pavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Thanks everybody for participating. Hare Krishna Prakrita, comment ça va mon ami? Tout va bien là-bas? Ça va bien, c'est parfait, parfait. Merci beaucoup pour ton meeting ce matin, c'était vraiment bien. Oui, on a reçu de la neige, hier on a reçu de la neige. <laughs> Essaye de communiquer avec ton ami en France. I'm telling our Prakrita to try to communicate with his friend in France. It's very good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, c'est bon, bonne idée. Ok, Hare Krishna. Hare Bolo, Hare Bolo. Bande Hang Sri Guru Sri Juta Padakamalang Sri Guru Vaishna Bangsha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Nitang Tang Sajivam Sadaitang Sabadhutang Parijana Sahitang Krishna Chaitanya